In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today we read about Jesus' baptism, and we read it in the book of Mark. It's fairly direct. Uh, it doesn't have any picky details. But if you look at the, okay, sin optic, which means seen with one eye, sin like synthesize, synthesizer, sin, together, optic, eye. So we call Matthew, Mark, and Luke the synoptic gospels, meaning that much of what's in one is in the other. There are gaps, but you look across it. John's outside on the other. He's not one. So um, in the synoptics gospels and in John, you have some reference to the baptism of Jesus. Um, Mark's straight and to the point. Matthew gives you uh, 18 verses on the temptation. John just said he was, or Mark said he was tempted. Uh, Luke gives you a genealogy and 13 verses on the temptation. And then finally, you have John who says, and he saw the spirit descending on him like a dove. That's, that's John's total reference to the baptism of Jesus. Matthew has a line in it that nobody else has, and that has always troubled me, so I decided I would preach on it and get it straight. John says to Jesus, uh, John the Baptist says to Jesus, I am not worthy. And Jesus says, let it be accomplished to fulfill all righteousness. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. What did Jesus have to do to fulfill all righteousness? The Greek word righteousness really means divine appointment. So in other words, to do whatever it is God intends for us to do. It doesn't mean we're righteous like man that was a righteous hip to first base or... Um, <laughs> Uh, my cause is righteous and I'm marching on Washington. It doesn't mean that. It means divinely appointed, meaning God is what God would like us to do. Um, in Micah, it tells us what God requires of us. It says, what does God require of you all mortal? But to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Not behind or under, but with your God. And these are um, requirements that lead us to our own baptisms and those are the people that we brought to be baptized um, the Book of Common Prayer has a few other requirements but they all fall under these heads first off you have to say you have to renounce Satan and all the works of evil because they separate us from God that's why that's in there uh, give up sinful desires turn to Jesus as your Savior and uh, trusting in his grace and, grace and love. That's righteousness, doing what's divinely appointed. Um, for a memory review, there are two sacraments in the Episcopal Church, only two, um, and they were, both of them were instituted by Jesus, so you have um, <laughs> Baptism is one, and the Holy Eucharist is the other. We have five other sacramental acts, which we tend to kind of roll together, giving us seven. Jesus tells the listening crowd that their righteousness has to be greater than that of the Pharisees and the scribes or teachers of the law. Well, so what does that mean? Well, the preachers and the teachers did their job but they didn't do it. They just talked about it. And so he's saying, it's one thing to talk about what righteous things everybody should do. But remember, righteousness means divinely appointed by God. So there are other things that we're supposed to do. For, uh, for us, we have the Great Commission, which tells us in broad terms how to fulfill our righteousness. The Great Commission is in Matthew 28, very end. <clears throat> and he says, go and make disciples of all people, teaching them, and I have it written down because, uh, in the name of the 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Well, so what does that mean? Go and make disciples of all people. How do we do that? Well, one way is we might invite them to church or to a wonderful talent show to come with us and see how well we're doing. Um, we might take up a collection of supplies like pens and pencils and uh, crayons to give to the local, oh yeah, we do that, to the local school. Or donate to North Dallas Shared Ministries. Or carry socks and water in the car to give to the homeless on the street. We are not expected to go and preach the gospel someplace out of this country. But to do to the people who are here what we have the strength and the ability to do. Those are acts of righteousness divinely appointed, God tells you in Matthew 25 what it is you're supposed to do. I haven't read Matthew recently. Read Matthew. It has a lot of good stuff in it, including the, all the things we're supposed to be doing. But in Matthew 25, which is the sheep and the goats, he divides it into two groups based on whether they took care of the hungry and the widows and the orphans, the naked and the incarcerated. So those are some things that we can translate into what we do today to fulfill all righteousness, to do the divinely appointed acts that God would have us to do. Um, last week, Father Chris talked about the transfiguration and the voice coming from heaven saying, this is my son, the beloved. And then he said, God would say that to all of you. Well, this is also part of what happened in the baptism. He declared Jesus the beloved. And so the important thing to take from this is not that we are to be all busy doing acts of righteousness, but to remember that we are beloved, full stop. Nothing is required for that. He loves us because we are his children. And because we are his children, we are often seeking to fulfill all righteousness and know what God would have us do. Amen. Amen.